Here we go. Let's make it a good day. We do it our own way. Let's make it a good day. Oh, no matter what they say. Oh, yeah, yeah. And good morning, everybody, and welcome to day seven of the Minnesota State Fair and a special split edition of the Jason Show. I'm Jace out here at the Minnesota State Fair Fairgrounds. I'm outside of my cage, thank goodness. And joining me back at our studios in Eden Prairie, she's my sidekick sister from another mister and Klondike Kate's favorite assistant, Kendall Mark, everyone. Wow, thanks. I would love to be Klondike Kate's assistant. Klondike Kate's assistant. That was really hard to say. How are you, Jason? I'm doing well. This is what, I, Kendall, this is what I love about the fair and I what? love about live television. Chip, get a, I mean, where else can you see Klondike Kate text messaging somebody? I mean, look at that. Oh, she's right She's there. just calling. Who are you calling? She, she's calling an Uber. She's calling a fair Uber to come pick her up. Yeah. Oh, she's getting ready to go home. It's hard out here for Klondike Kate, girl. It's hard out here. And then it's also hard out here for you, Kendall. I, uh, I, I would rather walk on my lips than start the show with negativity. But Kendall, you know how it's a tradition on our show that I fire you almost on the daily, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, that trend is catching on. And now, other than people just coming up and asking me for free food and pictures, people are now coming up to me and hand to Oprah, Kendall. I would normally not start the show like this. But I now have people coming up to me asking me, Jason, can I fire Kendall today? So today, this gentleman over here, come on, Chip, let's what take a walk. This? this gentleman walked up to me today. He doesn't want a picture. He doesn't want free food. He just wants to do one thing. What's your name, sir? Troy. Troy, go ahead, look right into Chip's camera there and say what you want to say. Kendall, you're fired. <laughs> let's, let's get the NASCAR cut out in there. Ted, bring it in. <laughs> <laughs> Kendall, I'm very sorry. He's going to be replacing you for the new season, uh, which, by the way, Shameless Plug kicks off on Tuesday, season seven. But, uh, Kendall, it's been great working with you. We've had a really great time, but I think he's going to do great. I, got, I have some suits ready to go for you. Perfect. Perfect. So, Kendall, how do you feel about this being your last week? I don't know how you're going to do the show without me today. You should have maybe saved that for Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, oh, Kendall, Kendall, yeah. wait a minute. So, you still look, have to do there's the a sighting. Today. Look, Kendall, she's a, rel she's a relative of yours, isn't it? Isn't that Miss Minnesota? Jason, That's your sister, isn't it? This is the most extra desk chat I've ever experienced in my life. Um, by the way, oh, hi, Ellie, you look great. Um, Jason, so if we could get back to the whole other people are now asking to fire me I, bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I, um, what was his I, name again? I, I, what was that guy's name? What was your name again, sir? Troy. It's Troy. It's uh, Troy. So if the graphics department can get that Troy name ready for graphics. But what was your question, Kendall? Troy, I just wanted to know where you work or where you live so that when I'm unemployed, I can come over and harass you at your job and you can pay me. <laughs> Shot across the fairgrounds. No, Kendall's <laughs> right. We're being very extra. But then again, have you met me? But all kidding aside, Kendall's <laughs> sister, the Miss Minnesota, is coming up on the show a little bit later. But right now, we're going to send it back to Kendall to kick off the hot dish. I would, I, this would be the part where I would normally scoop the hot dish um, and roll it. But I threw my spoon at the camera. So back to using my hand. <sighs> it's already a rough day. <laughs> All right, the drama at Jeopardy was just too much for Sony to take, and now the executive producer, who was the permanent host for like a whole 24 hours, is now completely out of a job. Mike Richards was the announced replacement as host last month and served as the host for the first five episodes of the new season, but resigned after a podcast surfaced of him making derogatory comments. He kept his executive producer job on the show, but got the official boot yesterday when the suits realized, hey, keeping him around, it's probably not a great idea. A little distracting. People are like, yeah, he's not the host, but he's still pulling all the strings, and he still said all those terrible things. Jason, are you surprised? 
No, you and I have talked about this. Uh, if I'm Sony, I mean, they really and curried this. I haven't seen a transition mess up this bad since the Today Show. It's just awful. And, uh, and now look, and you know me, now this is 400 times I've said this. I don't buy into blanket cancel culture. I think you should take every case uh, of individually. But look, this guy, he said a lot of stuff about everybody, Jewish folks, gay folks, little people. I mean, everybody. And it wasn't that long ago that he said this crap. It was 2014, because I, I don't like digging up 20-year-old interviews and complaining about them. People change. You should also allow for forgiveness. But 2014 wasn't that long ago. So having said all of that, you expect this guy who is busted for saying all this to lead a team, not a host, but they let him still be executive producer after, no, you can't lead a team after that. It was the right move, but wow. Overall, Sony has really bungled this. They bungled a show that was basically drama uh, free for about four decades. It's a big miss, big miss for them. Yeah, big miss. And hey, believe it or not, there's another show with a bit of a shakeup happening, this time over at The Talk. A week after Carrie Ann and Naba announced her departure from the show, now another co-host is leaving. Journalist Elaine Welteroth, she out. That's her. She's been a co-host on the show for less than a year. So if you're like, who? Well, it's because she hasn't even been there a full year. She joins a growing list of departed co-hosts, including Marie Osmond, Eve, Sharon Osborne, Sarah Gilbert, Julie Chen Moonves. The list goes on and on. Elaine will now focus on, quote, other projects. CBS will reportedly search for a replacement before their season premiere in two weeks. That show, I, I mean, it, honestly, is such a train wreck. It is a mess. I cannot believe another person is leaving. I, Jason, I heard it might have had something, a little something to do with what yeah. happened with Sharon and Shannon. But seriously, Sharon and Cheryl. Is it, Kendall, Sorry. Don't, don't you love it? Kendall, don't you love it? The whole PR, the PR line of I'm going to pursue other projects. Yes. That's like when the HR person, when they're firing you, looks at you and, and says the following, we're gonna let you succeed someplace else. Thanks. Yeah. That's basically what that PR line means. Look, I've said it before, you and I have said it, we've laughed about this. CBS should have pulled the plug on this show months ago. Uh, put an old game show in there, put on Sale of the Century, put in uh, charades or something. Charades. Put kids playing beanbags. This show, because who is left? We have Jerry O'Connell and Cheryl, that's it. And, oh, and then the, uh, the, the, the other woman who just got in there in January. Amanda and the executive Close. producer said they're gonna find another, yeah, Amanda, I'm sorry, thank you, Kendall. Uh, they said they're gonna find a new permanent co-host by uh, September 13th. That's two weeks away. <laughs> that's two weeks away. I know. I what, okay, Jason, honestly, what if they were like, Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Hello, Jason Matheson. Are you interested in joining the talk? Uh, no. <laughs> that would be like, remember those rats at the end of Titanic and they were running from the water? I would be one of those little rats. No, 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 no. I like our show. I love our show. And plus, you wouldn't be there. And I wouldn't do a show without you. Wait, so I'm not fired. No, you're never not. I mean, you're never fired. I, mean, I heard I heard executive you know, producer Jeff laughing just, in the background at that one. But, you know, joke's on me, I he guess. He did kind of He did, he did kind of laugh at that, he actually. Did. He did kind of laugh at that. <laughs> but anyway, back to you, Ken. <laughs> All right. Next in the dish, CBS the morn this morning is getting a facelift as they welcome a new co-host and new studio in Times Square. They'll now be called CBS Mornings. Take a look. Welcome to CBS Mornings, I'm Gail King. I'm Tony DeCopel. And I'm Nate Burleson. This is our new home in the heart of New York City. All righty, CBS Mornings debuts next week, and they will occupy the same studio that once hosted MTV's TRL. They're showing some images of it here on the screen if you want to check it out. But um, one, I was trying to figure out the TRL stage, but two, Jason, I know you love CVS Mornings. I know that you love set design, casting, all that stuff. What are your thoughts? 
I have a lot of thoughts. I could do a whole half hour on this, but I'll keep it <laughs> as condensed as I can. But first and foremost, I'm contractually obligated to say, of course I watch the Fox 9 Morning News with Alex Kendall and Tom Butler and meteorologist Keith Marler. Mm -hmm. But when I'm not watching them, mm -hmm. I love, I, I have to be honest, I love CBS this morning. That's why this worries me. I love Nate Burleson, uh, former Viking. Uh, he was on Good Morning Football. Is that what it was called? Sure. I think, I think it's called Good Morning Football. Anyway, he was, I love him on the show. The set looks beautiful, you're right. I've been in that TRL set, it's giant. I love a good logo. Here's where I'm, I'm worried about two things. First, did you notice they're taking the trumpet theme from CBS Sunday Morning? Yes. Now, I get CBS thinking, CBS is thinking, that C Sunday Morning show is so popular and they own it. Why not stretch that branding across all of their morning shows? Could be brilliant, I'm not sold. The other thing I'm not sold, the reason I like CBS Sunday Morning and the Fox 9 Morning News with meteorologist Keith Marler, Alex Kendall, and Tom Butler is because I want news in the morning. I know that sounds like a promo line that you would see in a dumb promo, but I want hard news. That's why people go to CBS this morning. That's why, you know, Anthony Mason was great. That's why Charlie Rose was great before we realized he was a Mervy Pervy. But I come to that show instead of the Today Show and GMA because those are circuses. I'm worried that they're going to go to fluff and that's not going to be good for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's a it's a fair point. I think a lot of people were like, oh, no more Anthony Mason, and we're a little sad about that one, too, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love Tony DeCopel, though. Yeah. Like, I really love Tony DeCopel. Mm -hmm. people like, I really love Tony okay, DeCopel. Okay, we get it. You love Tony DeCopel. And I like his wife, Katie Turr. Yeah, okay. I love, I love, yeah. Anyway, back to you. <laughs> Jason would like to be adopted, everybody. Hey, everyone, stick around. Still ahead, a very familiar face returns to the Bachelor franchise. We'll show you who showed up on Bachelor in Paradise looking for love. Plus, Miss Minnesota. You just saw her. She's joining Jason live at the fair. Ellie Mark, my sister, will talk about what she's been up to since winning the crown. And hopefully Jason will ask her a bunch of really embarrassing questions. That's true, truly. And then I hit up the fair over the weekend. I'll show you some of my favorite spots if you want to do a quick in and out of the fair. The Jason Show will be right back. Who is that? Uh, no way. I give you... The Bachelorette of Paradise. Oh my God! Obviously, you know who this is. Becca, welcome to Paradise. Thank you, surprise! It's Becca! Like, what is she doing here? Not only is there another rose available, but it's from one of the most amazing people ever. Wow. A Bachelorette has never graced this beach here in Paradise. The Paradise Gods have heard my cry. And they have delivered. What a good looking group. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So behind the scenes here, Ted and I are having a conversation about this. Becca turned up for her third shot at love on Bachelor in Paradise last night. And of course, the women immediately were like not into it. We were just discussing though, this is actually the second time this has happened because Colton was technically the first Bachelor to come on Bachelor in Paradise. Anyway, schematics. Jason, how do you feel about this new arrival? I know it's your favorite show. Well, I'm very worried for Becca on STD Island. I mean, I, I love mm -hmm. her. She's Prior Lake's best. Her mom watches our show. I, even though Becca's mom, we still have a message. Becca's never appeared on our show. She's only appeared over there on Twin Cities Live. Hey, but anyway, yeah. hey, wait, we're Jason, not holding that Jason? against her. We're still, what? what? Um, yes? Speaking yes? of Twin Cities Live, they actually just heard how I've been fired four times already this morning. So I'm on the phone with Elizabeth Reese. I gotta go, don't worry. Evan, did you, you're fine, right? You got this? Okay. You can, you, this guy can read prompters, right? I brought in the NASCAR double for you, Jason. You'll be fine. I gotta oh, go. Oh, where's Troy? Troy, Kendall brought in the NASCAR double. Your space is all ready to go. And Kendall's heading over to Twin Cities Live. <laughs> it's a swap. It's like, don't they do this in the NFL? Don't they swap players? I don't know. It's, okay. what is it called? It's a trade. Oh, We okay. traded. Like, just kidding. Um, is, hey, did I get the lingo right, Kendall? Yeah, no, sorry, Jason. Um, Elizabeth said she just, she had to talk to her people first. So I, I guess I'm back for at least the rest of the show. Whew. All right. Okay. Um, sorry, okay. Troy. All right, next.
more from Bachelor Nation. We're getting our first look at the upcoming season of The Bachelorette. The season features Minnesota's Michelle and much of the season is shot right here in the Twin Cities. We're famous. Teddy, are you ready? Are you ready? What's going on? What's going on? I'm looking for someone who's gonna change the world with me. I'm ready. Ready? Ooh, ball. The new season debuts in October. I was reading a little bit about this. They shot a lot in California and a lot right here in the Twin Cities. I know you don't love The Bachelor, but you probably will watch at least a little bit of this one because it's Michelle, right? No. Come on, just a little. No, I will. No, I will. And you're right. I've seen the crews all around. They were in my neighborhood. And it was like, you, Kendall, you should have seen how many people it took. It was just a scene with two people. They had like 37 people walking around. There was like four cameras. Uh -huh. There was a light person. Yes. There was a person with a dove. I didn't understand that. Oh. But it was nuts. But yeah, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it not for the game or for the, the love. I'm going to watch it just to see the Twin Cities in it. <laughs> That's true. I mean, so anybody who doesn't normally watch, it's just one other reason to maybe give it a try this season. Hey, speaking of famous Minnesotans, Rachel Lee Cook, who made a name for herself in a teen movie, She's All That. Oh, God, I love that movie when she transformed from a geek into a knockout, if you don't remember. Lady Boggs, get your cute butt down here. Swing, swing, swing the spinning step. You wear those shoes and I will wear that dress. Oh. not want to marry Freddie Prince Jr. back then, or at least kiss him, or at least fall down some stairs into his arms, and I'll show you a liar. Gosh, that man was beautiful. Anyway, after that breakout role, she was offered the role of Rogue in X-Men, which she turned down. Now, according to the New York Times, it was a decision that she regretted almost immediately. That role eventually went to Anna Paquin, who was also from that clip in the movie, She's All That, That's ironically. Awesome. She starred in four X-Men movies. Well, instead, Rachel decided to star in the comedy, very renowned, everybody loved it, Josie and the Pussycats. Nobody, nobody liked that movie. Nobody. No, no, yeah. no, I actually walked, do you wanna know, Kendall, I walked out of that movie. <gasps> I walked out of maybe four movies when I used to review, I literally walked out of that movie. And here's another thing that you're not gonna like. What? I've never seen She's All That. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That is like the movie no. of the 90s, early 2000s, like Freddie Prince Jr. Oh my gosh, I die. I had a poster. Yeah. yeah. Kendall, I was already receiving bumper stickers from AARP in the 90s, so <laughs> it just wasn't my in my demo as far as movies. But I like her. I love Freddie Prince. We're the same age. But uh, speaking of nice people, look, I'm sitting, I, I just, I, they, I didn't even ask him, Kendall, if I could join him. What's your name? Uh, David. Jillian. Do you mind if I sit here? Oh, not at all. Okay, perfect. They're nice. I may buy them food because, you know, Kendall, did you hear? Mm -hmm. uh, I took the credit card of our boss, Marion Mim Davey, and I'm going to buy random strangers uh, food. Mm -hmm. Random act of kindness coming up in a little bit. When you say you borrowed, was it like a, like a five-finger discount borrow, or did she actually give it to you? Um, I waited until she went into her conference room, mm -hmm. and I just dug into her purse and took her credit card out. Yep, there it is. All right, next in the dish, come back to the TV, folks. Seriously, this is pretty hilarious. You're going to want to see it. Now, envision this. If Kim Kardashian and Justin Bieber had a baby, what would it look like? <laughs> this. <laughs> Take a look at this billboard in L.A. We have a hotel in Hollywood to thank for this. Now, Justin's top half... And that is Kim K's bottom half. Apparently the crew is putting up the new Justin ad, but left the Kim part up while they went on break. And like, I just love the people who did this because you know they were like, you know, it would be really yeah. funny 
if we did this, and it is really funny. Yeah. Look, I hate, I don't like that family. They don't, you know, please, I don't need I to keep don't. saying it. But bravo, this is brilliant. This is this is brilliant marketing on on their part. I think it's it's one of my favorite stories of the day. I think it's hysterical. Um, by the way, you have quite the crew behind you at this point. You said free food, and like people just stopped in their tracks and are yeah. just waiting. No, these these folks gathered before they heard I was giving away free food a little bit later. Are you They're sure? just here. They're just here to be nice. Well. And again, per Fox policy, they all they all showered about an hour ago. So they're <laughs> all all of them. Well, maybe not that guy. Maybe I mean blue shirt, questionable. Questionable, Kendall. I don't know. Yeah, throw on a little. So everyone body smells spray. fresh and clean out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you just throw on some body spray, yeah. you're fine. It's fine. We won't tell anyone. Totally. <laughs> totally. Next in the dish. Okay, we've got a mullet update. Have we ever said that on the show? We have a mullet update. Whatever. This morning, and we wish we had better news. Minnesota's beloved mullet king, Art Curtis Wilson, did not win best mullet in America. But honestly, the competition was tough. He finished 11th out of the 25 finalists. He was the only one representing the good old Minnesota. Curtis sent us a note that he really appreciated everyone's support. So, of course, one last look at that marvelous mane. Wow. I mean, honestly, <laughs> I love these photos so much. If you missed the interview with Curtis, uh, he was so nice and so funny and the reason he even got into it was really to support the troops from my understanding and it turned into this big shindig. Jason, yeah. I know that you really liked him. Oh, I got he was really nice. It's hard. You know, we call them satellite interviews when we interview people, you know, and they're in the what we call the two box. It's really hard to be like, oh, they're really nice. But I got a he was such a cool dude and so nice to Ted and just appreciative to be on the show. I really wanted him to do better, and he had a really good mullet, if I do say so. I mean, speaking of mullets, let me, a uh, poll here, dispen anybody in this audience, have you ever had a mullet, anybody? You've had a mullet? Blue t-shirt? Oh, you raised your hand. You've had a mullet, sir? Okay, hold on, come, Chip, come over here. What year did you have said mullet? 1985. Okay, when did you lose the mullet? Uh, 1986. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the law firm, and I was getting towards the end. I decided I didn't want to go to law school, yeah. so I was going to quit. And I grew my hair longer and longer and longer. And about maybe June, July, when I quit, I cut, cut my hair, off. cut it off. Yep. Cut it off. It lasted one season. <laughs> one eighty-five, eighty-six. Those were the good old days. That's right. Of. Oh, wait a minute. You. A week. I'm, you're a stylist, yeah. and you, what did you just I'm say? I'm not your new stylist. Yeah. I, I'm really, you know, sad yeah. to say that. But um, I cut about two to three mullets at least every other week. For I love that there's a mullet week. average. I love there's... There is. There, uh, in a barber shop, yes. <laughs> now, really quick, let me look at the time. Okay, we have about a minute. I'm fascinated. Do you, how do you, do you just trim it up? Like, how do you, what's the care of a mullet? Short sides, just a touch off the back but like a number two on the sides. Okay, I love that we're getting the specific razor number two. Number two on the side, just a little trim, get off the dead ends, just and then the, flow. And then the, fl the flow. The flow. Okay, I love these people so much, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's the demographic? Like 16 to 22, maybe even younger and a little older. It's just the hot haircut right now. Okay. It's hot. Kendall, I think, you know what? We're still trying to get Ted uh, a date. Maybe he should think mullet. Maybe uh, he should I'm seeing not. mullet for producer Ted. Maybe not. No. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably not. Yeah. <laughs> we got to take a break. When we, when we come back, Kendall's sister's here, but we just know her as Miss Minnesota. She's going to join us coming up. We're going to talk about the crown and, of course, secrets of Kendall with the Jason Show live at the Minnesota State Fair continues right after this. Back in a moment. Our new Miss Minnesota is Ellie Mark, Miss St. Croix Valley. Rachel Aaron, you are our first runner up tonight. And welcome back to day seven out here at the Minnesota State Fair, a special split edition of the Jason Show. I'm Jace out here at the fairgrounds. We'll go back to Kendall in just a few minutes because 
We have Kendall's sister here. That's right. You just saw the moment she was crowned Miss Minnesota. It's Miss Minnesota, Ellie Mark, everyone. Hi. Hello. It's, it's so good to finally meet you. It's weird that I haven't met you yet. Right. I know. It's, it's been a bit, for I know. sure. It takes... It takes you getting a crown for us to meet. I know. I'm always Kendall's little sister, and even with a crown on my head, I still am. But I'm glad we finally get to meet for that reason. Should we just blame Kendall for that, for us not meeting? Yeah, I heard she's been fired a lot, so she has been. add that to the list. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just blame her. <laughs> uh, all kidding aside, you're, you're not here just to do our show. You're here for a, at the fairgrounds for a special reason today. Yes, I will be part of the State Fair Parade today, so if you come on out, it's a gorgeous day for the parade. You'll see me and a couple other people in crowns in the trolley, so wave. I love it. Me and a couple other people wearing crowns. Okay, um, what is now, let me, uh, there are different types of waves. I need to see, can you show me your parade wave? Mine's really basic. I just wave like a normal human. Um, no, but I feel like when people do really choreographed waves, yeah. it looks really fake. It and does. I just, I get excited. So I just go like this when I see people. And if I see a baby or a dog, it's this. So <laughs> I do the same thing and I don't have a crown on my head. Uh, well, let me ask you some fair related questions. Now, the first one is about food. And let me look at my sheet here. Kendall wrote to me that my sister is a very picky eater. Is this true? Yes, sadly. Okay, now give me an example, like why, like give me an example of how picky you are. So I've kind of grown out of this, but not really. I can't have my food touch. I'm one of those people. But when I was a kid, my parents put a plate of very basic like vegetables, mashed potatoes in front of me. And I pointed at all of it and said, I don't like this or this or this. And I threw the plate up and threw my head down. I was a little dramatic. Back oh, then. you Teresa Judice that though, <laughs> that little food tray there. Yeah. Um, okay, so what are you going to eat out here? Are you willing to try things? I am. So I see the deep fried alligator. I've had a bite of that before. Wasn't my favorite, but my favorite thing that makes me truly Minnesotan is the, um, what is that called? The deep fried like casserole or whatever on a stick. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hot dish on a stick. There how, how about now behind us? Have you ever had a Prano pup? Oh yes. Okay. And Prano pups over corn dogs any day. Perfect. Well, uh, it's been two months. We ran that clip a few minutes ago. It's been two months, months since you've been crowned. I always want folks to take me to that moment because all of us watching these folks will never be crowned Miss Minnesota. Well, maybe you will, but what is, what is that moment like? Like I saw Kendall in the audience. The moment they say your name, we saw the clip, they say, Ellie Mark, what's in your head? Oh, I get chills just thinking about it. I had worked so hard for 15 months leading up to that point, and it had been a dream of mine for so long. And I was standing there with my first runner-up, and all I heard was L, and the rest I kind of black out because I was just in shock but so grateful. It was very surreal, and I was just so excited to get started and get the crown on my head. Let's be real. Every Miss Minnesota has, or every pageant has, a, 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 like a charitable component. I love yours. Uh, you do good work for whom? The campaign to change direction, it's all about promoting mental health and emotional well-being and thinking about it the same way we would our physical health, recognizing that we need to be proactive with it and it's okay to not be okay. Yeah, I love it. I, I love, especially for your generation, even back in my generation, the talk, talk shows like Oprah helped, but the fact that it's just freely talked about now is, I think it's a great thing. So w good on you. Okay, um, enough of this. Take this. I don't need this anymore because... It's all about Kendall. Uh, Leo, go ahead and pop uh, Kendall up here because uh, let's act like she's not here, Ellie, but just tell the audience, I oh, want the dear. dirt, I want the skinny. Um, what are some quirks about her that we don't know? What are some weird habits? Um, does she chew weird? I mean, just anything. We all know she snorts when she laughs. We all know she puts Frank's Red Hot on everything. But the weirdest thing that Kendall will do is she's the reason I like can't be tickled anymore, or even tickled fingers towards me. She's a tickle monster to the point where she will tickle you till you cry. So I think it's kind of vicious. And um, I'm holding her accountable in the public eye today. Yeah. She needs to stop tickling me. Let's make a petition. Let's do it. And thank goodness, due to HR regulations, that's never happened on the Jason Show set. <laughs> But I mean, you know, uh, Kendall, is this true? I may or may not have sat on her multiple times in her life and tickled her until death. Okay, now Kendall, fair is fair. I've picked on you a lot today. Uh, we see your sister here, Chip, get a shot. Beautiful, pristine.
perfection. She's Miss Minnesota personified. Mm -hmm. Fair play. Give us a weird quirk of Miss Minnesota. Ellie, Ellie, Ellie. Ellie has passed 11 kidney stones. That's gross and weird. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, um, okay. Oh, she, she used um, to be in love Kendall, with the Jonas um, I think Brothers. we're just going to know. Kendall, we're going to... Oh, okay. she's got a huge crush um, we're gonna on Max cut you off Kepler, right there. the baseball, like, you know, the Twins okay. outfielder, Max okay. Kepler. She's got a big crush Leo, on him. That's so embarrassing, isn't it? Leo, we can go ahead and cut Kendall's mic now. Um, um, would you like to know what your sister said about you? I'm scared. Well, you should be. She liked, uh, she told everyone, the thousands of people watching, that you've passed about 11 kidney stones. <laughs> This is true, yes. <laughs> yes, 11 kidney stones in the span of three years. So, see? Wow. That's, I mean, that's it. We all have a claim to fame. I mean, yeah. I mean, that is my fun fact. If someone asks me and I can't think of anything else, but it's not so fun, I know. Well, I think it's fantastic. Kendall, thank you for that fun fact. Congratulations to you. You're so, we're so, we, the whole staff, we're so proud of you. So, continued success. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Kendall, your sister's lovely. We love her. We're going to take a break, everyone. More fun from the Minnesota State Fair. I've stolen my boss's wallet, so I'm going to buy random strangers food. Coming up. We're going to go back with Kendall in just a few minutes, but my feeling is, and I don't want to sound like a Hallmark card, but you know, uh, people are mean. The world's a little crazy right now. So, oh, wait a minute. What's happening? Oh, look, it's, it's, J come on, come on. I see Jason DeRussia from Channel 4. Let's go see, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, Mr. DeRussia, excuse me, Mr. DeRussia. How are you doing today? You know what? Thanks for asking. Yeah. I'm doing amazing. Yeah. Doing amazing. Um, how, how's your fair day going today? You know what? I was a little nervous about being out here, but it is, in fact, my fifth day out here, so I've gotten used to it. Uh, my day is great. great. I'm glad to hear it. Yes, it's nice to see another Jason. Big fan. That's right. I'm a big, big fan, fan of yours. Yeah, Thanks. Yeah, and there's Heather Brown, too, who I love. There's, there's Heather Brown from CCO Art. I recognized you. That's right. The good old WCCO. We love ambushing the other stations. But uh, love you, Jace. Love you, too. That's right. There's Jason DeRussia. He's the best, everybody. Okay, let's go over here, Chippers. So as I was saying, uh, the world is mean. People are just, you know, they're in bad moods. So we're trying to spread some sunshine. So we're doing random acts of kindness. Yesterday, I snuck into the office of our president, Marion Mim Davy Kessler Santanello Sarah Jessica Parker, and I got into her purse, and I took her credit card, and I went to the ATM, and look, cold hard cash. This is Marion Mim Davy money. So I'm buying random people food. These folks were nice enough to let me sit with them earlier, so we're going to buy them food. Now, you've had alligator, right? I've had it before, yeah. Okay, you have it, right? Oh, I've never had it. It's your lucky day. Come on, let's go spend Mim's money. Come on. Let's go up here. We're going to go buy some alligator. Let's wait up here. Hi. Uh, let's do just an order of alligator. Okay. I've never, what? It comes with hush puppies or tater tots? Hush puppies or tater tots? Oh, hush puppies. Hush puppies, please. There we go. I've never, I've never ordered alligator before. I didn't even know what to say. I, what do you say? Um, hopefully it tastes good. I don't, yeah, know. I, don't, I don't know either. Here's the change that we won't be giving back to Mim. But anyway, hey, buddy. I'm doing great. I'm spending my boss's money. Yeah, thanks, right? That's the best way to do it. That's the best way to do it. Okay, here's Gator. Okay, here, look at this. Chip, get a shot. Fresh, fresh from Louisiana. Right there is a Gator. Okay, here we go. All right, let's see how it goes. He's never eaten Gator before. He's chewing a little bit. It's better that it's free, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, what's it taste like? Tastes like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Thank you, my friend. Enjoy. Oh, thank Enjoy. You, there we go. I mean, let's see who, where, where else we can spend some money. Come on, Chip. Let's go back out here. Who else? Who else needs a day brightener? Right there. You need a day brightener. Oh, 
You forgot to bring my pull tab? Yeah, we yeah, had them. Go home and get them. Well, yeah. Oh, I bet serums. Yeah, well, go get some pull tabs for me, for heaven's sake. I mean, okay, let's see here. Who else needs, who else needs, I mean, you are replacing Kendall. I'm so, I'm, what did you just say? Nothing. You just said he's had plenty of food. We just got here, too. Oh, my he, God. He doesn't want to be eating on TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Our boss doesn't like people eating on TV, so it's perfect. Great. So why don't I just give you her money? Thanks. There we go. Thanks. Thank you. Perfect. Actually, give me that back. I got to, I got to, I, I got to, I got to actually give some of that back to her. Uh, but, oh, look, one more. Come here. One little. Let's go. We always love the kids here. How are you, sweetie? Good. What's your name? Marley. Marley. I like your necklace. Thank you. Marley, would you like some of my boss's money? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Say thanks, Mim. Thank thanks, Mim. That's right. <laughs> She's great. That's fantastic, Marley. Spend all that, and if you spend that, come back, and I'll give you more of Mim's money, okay? Okay. Okay, that's great. Look at look how cute she is. We're teaching the kids early to take from their bosses. Uh, we're going to have more fun from the fair when we come back. Back in a moment. Hey, goodbye, Mim. Let's make it a good day. So much for watching. Hope you're having a good day at home. Well, Kendall, I know, is stuck in the studio, but I think fair is fair. So when the cameras start stop rolling here, Kendall comes out to the fair to get a little uh, taste of the fair, quite literally. Here is a look at her fair favorites. Take a look. Okay, since a lot of you might be coming this year and want to make a quick in and out at the fair, I have a plan that my family does every year that really hits all on the same exact street that I think you'll love, especially if you're with a bunch of adults. Hey, we made it to the International Bazaar. So we go here every year. We usually watch a show and then and the boys can sit there and do that. And all of us will walk around the shop. They have everything. Um, today though, there's this new place that's all Scandinavian upcycled stuff. I'll show you that. Julie's been very busy and she knows everyone here. So she's even talking to someone now. Thank you so much. Thanks for being a part of it. I already introed you. Oh, you did? <laughs> I said you were really popular. You've been busy. You've had a lot of people here. Yeah. Your upcycled materials right. have a Scandinavian flair. That's exactly right. We've used wool sweaters for years to make mittens, purses, elf hats, and we use Swedish braid on our purses, on our hats. We make bracelets. Show me your favorite thing. Um, Not to put her on the spot. Our elf hats are like one of our most Coveted items. Coveted, I couldn't think of the word. So, <gasps> when, look how cute I know. Is. That was on a sweater. So, everything that's on it was on the sweater itself. So, this was a vintage, a ladies' vintage sweater. So, we got two little elf hats out Stop. of it. Stop. They cute. go, our hats go all the way up to an adult large. Oh my God. So, you and everyone you know could wear a pointy hat. I don't know if I could get away with that. There's like really, really cute little baby stuff in here. So I'm gonna get some baby stuff for my new nephew. And then we're gonna go on to one of my other must stop areas of the fair. Now it's time for beer. Honestly, we come here every year. Um, I get my husband a t-shirt because all of this Minnesota Craft Brewers Guild, all the merchandise goes towards supporting them. And then you go around the corner and you get a bunch of local beer. It's a win-win. New. What's this one? I really am going to purchase this. This is the winner. That's it! Did you know that some of us like Christmas all the time? Me and Ted. So you can actually come and there are Christmas trees here at the State Fair um, in the Egg Hort building. We go through my family and we literally touch every tree. We figure out which one we like the best. You can vote for your favorite. And then around the corner, I don't know if they have them this year, we'll see, but they do Christmas wreaths and you vote for your favorite for that too. And it's so fun. 
Let's go touch things, Eric. Come on. Some people might call me a tree hugger, tree sniffer. Ow! Oh, yeah. And finally, conveniently located right across from the Egg Hort building where the beer is, so if people don't like wine, they can stay there. Minnesota wine country. Honestly, they've got really good food here. They have great little wines and they come in this Minnesota cutout. And nobody knows this is here, but it is a really cute museum. The log cabin right next to the winery. We walk through it every year. Truly, check it out. It's really, really cute. And drink wine. There's like a running theme here. It's really embarrassing. Enjoy the fair Kendall style. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love, I love the food out here this year. I know it's, you know, a weird off year, but there's some really great food offerings. I mean, the Strib and Smarch and Hanson, everyone, uh, I, I love their top 10 list. And your selections are great, Kendall. W wasn't it good out here this year? It was, it was great. And we went, it was raining the day that we went. So that's why I kind of stayed in that little pocket, but still it was really nice to just get out and actually see everything and try some food and, you know, eat good stuff. We know of some food that's really, really good that everybody keeps saying is some of the best new food at the fair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know what that is, but yeah. you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know it's right behind me over there. But anyway, mm -hmm. hey, speaking of new food, Kendall, wait till you haven't seen this. The audience hasn't seen this yesterday. Yeah. We took Ted out to try new foods. Oh, goodness. Uh, you're going to, Jeff, when we are in that, you're going to see that on Friday. Kendall, just look at my face and you'll know exactly how it went. Ted ate sushi at the fair. I, I, I will stay tuned. I will stay tuned. It's beautiful. It's <laughs> absolutely, it's probably one of my favorite moments. Because uh, he tried, I will say, he tried two things, Kendall. Two? And That's it? let's just say Ted walked away from this. Two! Two! <laughs> two things! And he walked away a different man, I think, in some ways. Can you, can you believe that? I'll have to confirm that during the commercial break. But, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> it was, Kendall, before we go to break, it was so funny. There's a sweet lady. I don't know where she was. She just walked up, and, you know, executive producer Jeff is out here today. Mm -hmm. And she walked up. Oh, there she is. She's my, so that's my sweetheart right here. She's my friend. She walked up. She walked up to Jeff, and she goes, are you Ted? <laughs> People love the Ted. They yeah. love the Ted. I said, no. No. We're, we have Jeff today. We have Jeff today. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Ted's coming out here tomorrow, but that piece will air on Friday. We can't, we can't wait for you to see it. And thanks for coming out, Kendall. I miss seeing you. I can't wait to get back in the studio. But we still have a few days at the Minnesota State Fair. More fun when we continue today right after this. Back in a moment, everyone. Again, I said this earlier, congratulations to my colleagues, Alex, Kendall, Kelly O'Connell, and um, our buddy Shane. We're real proud because they're launching a brand new show. It's new. It's more of like a transition. Y'all watch the Fox 9 Buzz if you watch the Jason show here in the Twin Cities at 9 a.m. right before our show. Well, starting September 7th, the Buzz is turning into... Fox 9 Good Day. It's kind of like going home because the morning show here on Channel 9's original name was Good Day Minnesota. So I love it. It's going to be a fun lifestyle show. It has a great producer. You hear me reference him all the time, Baby Bjorn. Uh, and we're so happy for Shane, Kelly, and Alex. We really think you're going to love the show. It's, it's, it's reflective of the life that you lead, a lifestyle show with great cooking segments and how-to and Gardening. I mean, Dale's in it for heaven's sake. So I'm really proud of the uh, of the ladies. You're gonna love it, and it's uh, a great companion to our show. So it's starting September 7th at 9 a.m. We're gonna take a break. We'll be back right after this. And welcome back. I couldn't think of a better way to end today's show. We were spending my boss's money earlier at Cherie behind me right there sitting on the bench. It's her birthday today, so I'm giving her Mim's credit card. That's right. She can spend our boss's money however she wants. Happy birthday, sweetie. 
Happy birthday. Go buy a hot uh, Kendall, I can't wait to see you back in the studio. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and thanks to all of you for watching. Like I said, coming up this week, Ted tries some crazy new foods, plus what it's like at the fair before anyone gets here. But right now, if you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day. We'll see you back here live tomorrow at the Minnesota State Fair. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching.